Example 1. Estimating an area. We're going to use rectangles to estimate the area under the parabola y equals x squared from 0 to 1. The parabolic region S is illustrated in this figure. So here is S. We can see that the, surf, the area S is in between 0 and 1. We have y equals x squared and we can see that this point represents 1, 1. Okay, and what we're going to do is we want to be able to approximate the area by using rectangles. Okay, so if we take a look at this scenario here in this graph, okay, what we're going to do is you can see that we've created rectangles. Okay, so how do we come about that? Well, first, we're going to get these rectangles and we're going towards the right. So these rectangles are forming towards the right because we're creating right endpoints at that curve. Okay, so here are our right endpoints. Okay, now how do we get one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one to be our endpoints? Well, this, this is how we would go about that. Okay, well, first and foremost, we know that we have, uh, we want to divide the base. Okay, so we know that we're going in the interval between zero and one. Okay. And we're going to divide this into four rectangles, which is what we just did. Okay, now in order to divide them into four rectangles, that means that we're going to have one rectangle that's going to go between zero and then one fourth. So that's one interval. And then we have another interval that's going to go from one fourth to one half. And then another interval that goes from one half to three fourths. And then we have another interval that's going to go from three fourths to one. Okay, now again, what we're doing here is we're using right endpoints to set the height of each rectangle. So again, we're, let's write this down, we're using. right endpoints to get the height of each rectangle. Okay. So what we're going to do now is since we have four rectangles and we're using the right endpoints, then one way of being able to identify this is we're going to call this capital R with four rectangles. Okay, and what that's going to equal is the sum of the areas of the four rectangles. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that we're going to take R4, which is going to equal F of one fourth times, well, what is the length from zero to one fourth or the width here? So the length here from zero to one fourth is going to give us one fourth. And then plus, now we have F of one half, which is the next increment. And we're going to multiply it by again, the width here, and excuse me, the length from one fourth to one half, which is one fourth plus f of 3 fourths, again, times 1 fourth, plus f of 1 times 1 fourth. Okay, so we know that our function is x squared. So what that means is we're going to take now 1 fourth and square it and multiply it by 1 fourth, plus we're going to take 1 half 
and square it and multiply that by 1 fourth plus 3 fourths squared and multiply that by 1 fourth plus 1 squared and then multiply that by 1 fourth. Okay, so again, what we're doing is, is we're taking the height, which is f of 1 fourth, f of 1 half, and we're multiplying it by its base. And so once we do that by taking the height times its base, then we're going to get 15 over 22, which gives us approximately 0 0.46. Eight seven five. So that represents the approximate area using right endpoints of the four rectangles. Okay, now let's see what happens when we want to find the left endpoints. Okay, so here is our graph for the left endpoints. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So for the left endpoints, okay, so we start here at one and we're starting and go towards the left. So there's our left rectangle and then another left rectangle and then another one here and then another one there. Okay, so therefore now we're using our left rectangles. So what we're going to do in this scenario is now we're going to let using four rectangles, we're going to let L4 equal the sum of the area of the four rectangles. Okay, so what does that mean here? Well, now what we want to do is since we're using the left endpoints, okay, we're starting with zero and then going with one fourth, and then one half, and then going with three fourths. So what that means is we're gonna take F of zero, which is the height, and multiply it by the base of one fourth increments, plus F of one fourth, and multiply it by the base of one fourth, and then plus f of one half times one fourth plus f of three fourths times the base of one fourth. So I want you to notice the difference between what we did here. Right? We're using the right endpoints. So let me highlight those so you can see what we're talking about here. So this is the right endpoint, so that's why it's f of one fourth. We're not using zero. The next one is f of one half. The next one is f of three fourths, and then the right one here is one. Okay. Now, when we're using the left, we're using the left endpoints of the rectangles. So here we start with zero, and then one fourth and then one half and then three fourths because again we're using the rectangles with the left endpoints. Okay so now what happens is is that when we plug that value in we know that we're going to get the following. We know that L4 and let me go ahead and make sure I have that changed here this should be l4 So we know that L4 is going to equal 0 squared times 1 fourth plus 1 fourth squared times 1 fourth plus 1 half squared plus 1 fourth plus 3 fourths squared times 
times one fourth. Okay, so in this in this case, we end up getting seven over thirty two, which means that L four is going to equal zero point two one eight seven five. And let me make this correction up here. This should be fifteen over thirty two. So this should be 15 over 32. I wrote it incorrectly here. Okay, so now we have the area for L4. Okay, now you can see here that there's a little bit difference of the area approximating using the left rectangles as opposed to the right rectangles. So if we want to then find out what is the total area in this scenario? Well, this is what we're going to have to do. So again, this was our R4. We know that this would be representative of step three. And again, what it's asking us is to find using rectangles to estimate the area under the curve. So we found the approximating area for left and the right. So what would we do here? Well, in step number four, okay, we know that the area for L4 was 0 0.21875. Okay, and then we know that the area for the right rectangles gave us 0 0.46875. Okay, which means that this area, S, has to be in between those two values. So if we want to get a better approximation, then we would take the area of L4 and add the area of R4 and then divide that by 2. So therefore we would get 0 0.21875 plus 0 0.46875. And then if we divide that by two, then it's gonna give us an area of 0 0.34375. So that would be the better approximation because we're taking the averages of the two left and right endpoint rectangles. Okay, so another way of looking at this is, okay, and so I've already done the sort of the calculation for this, but this is just sort of an extra here. Now, what do you notice about the amount of rectangles that we're using here? Well, there are eight rectangles, okay? So again, the, the first, this one represents the right rectangle, red endpoints. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and apply that here. So in blue, we're using the right endpoints. Okay, and then in green, we're using the left endpoints. Okay, so now when finding the right area with the eight rectangles gave us the value of 0 0.3984375. And then finding the left, which was 0 0.27. 34375. So recall that if we want to find the approximation of those two, then what we would do is we would take L8 and then add R8 and then divide that by 2. So if we took 0 0.27 four three seven five and then add zero point three nine eight 
four, three, seven, five, and then divide that by two. Then we would get zero point three three six four zero six two five. Okay. So if you look here, if we used four rectangles, we got point three four three seven five. When we use eight rectangles, we're getting a better approximation. So therefore it's point three three six four zero six two five. Okay, and then let's say that if we end up going a little further, okay, let's say that and I'll just make note here. Okay, let's say that we let uh, n equal 100 rectangles. Okay, so that means that R100 is equal to or found to be 0 0.33. 3825 and L100 end up being 0 0.332835. Okay, so again, let's find the average of those two. So if we take 0 0.332835 plus 0.33825. And then divide that by 2. Well, then we get the approximation of 0 0.333335. So, as you can see here, we're getting closer and closer to a better approximation, but again, we've increased it to 100 rectangles. So, therefore, that's what happens when you increase the amount of rectangles that you use under the curve.